Ronnie, and we're here at Comoricon again, and right next to me here is a man that probably doesn't need an introduction because if you've watched any anime or played a video game in the last, like, ten years, you've heard his voice. His name is Keith Silverstein. How are you doing, man? Hi, Brad. It's good to meet you. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Um, thanks so much. So, you've done... The list goes on forever. I mean, we've got Sonic, you've done Mobile Gundam, Voices from Mobile Gundam, My Hero Academia, what what else we've got? Did you do Stitch? Oh, I worked on a, a series, an anime series. That's my real voice, by the way, folks. In case you didn't think, you're like, what? I thought he had this crazy high-pitched voice. Um, yeah, Stitch was an anime version of the show, Stitch. It didn't, instead of Hawaii, it took place in Japan, and I did work on that. We did a number of episodes. Um, and Overwatch, uh, Resident Evil, uh, Soul Calibur Six just came out. I'm returning as yes. Solomel in that. Yes, that. Um, Naruto, Bleach. Bleach. Yeah, you do, man. You've done just. I mean, wh how many voices have you think you've done so far? I, I have absolutely no idea. I don't even know where you separate sure. one voice from it. Like some voices are clearly a, di a different voice and a different mm -hmm. character. But we do a lot of work that's close to our natural voice, or that's similar to like I've got. You know, if I've got a gruffer, you know, older voice. You know, we have done that for a lot of different shows. So I don't know if you count those as separate voices or characters. Yeah, because I'm always looking through IMDb sometimes. And I'm like, wait, that's him? Right. <laughs> like, but he was so different. It's like it's pretty sometimes you're lucky. At least in, in my opinion, like I really like when I do get to play something a little different, so that I'm not just you know typecast. It's just he's just this mm -hmm. this one style character, just a deep voice. Like I like playing younger characters, or older characters, zany characters. Just anything that's a little different is cool. And then I don't mind so much returning back. To whatever my core voice is, just because it's not the only thing I'm, you know, able to do. So, so I'm curious, what actually just made you decide to become a voice actor? Um, I, it took me a while. I was one of those guys. Like I always envied, like in high school, a lot of my buddies knew exactly what they wanted to do. They had their career plan, you know, a path all planned out, and I did not. So I did a little fumbling around for a few years. Um, I had always done acting. Um, but I wasn't sure, I thought I was going to be like an actor, or maybe I'd be a rapper, or maybe I'd be a dancer, or you know, maybe I'd be an artist, or I'll be a writer, that's what I'm going to do. And the problem was, I, I didn't focus on anything. You know what I mean? Like, I was mildly good at all of those things. <laughs> I could do them, but no one was like, whoa, this guy is the best at whatever. So, um, my uncle was doing something, and he, uh, like a documentary style uh, program for some artwork. And he had uh, poetry to go along with the artwork, and he needed like different tribal voices to kind of match these faces that he'd drawn. And he had me audition, and uh, I ended up booking a couple roles and uh, went to a full, like, legit studio, you know, uh, and, and had a real session. I mean, it felt real, it wasn't like recording in his, ho his house or something like that. And I kind of fell in love with it right then and there. I kind of was like, they let me goof around on the mic after we were done a little bit. And, I, and we all kind of were like, yeah, maybe this is a thing, right? Like, I could really be doing this. Like, this exists. <laughs> so then it was, you know, looking up classes and how do I get started? And, you know, and then began the long ordeal of like, cool, because I don't want to wait tables anymore. So <laughs> let me do that. And I've been pretty focused since then. So um, what do you, when you get a role, do you actually, like, actually do? I've always wondered how it works with voice actors. Is it just that people look for your reel and say, hey, come be this voice or oh like how do you actually get offered the role in the first place yeah it's it's very there are different stories for different shows games whatever um when you start out generally speaking you're going to audition the first thing you're trying to do is just get on that list of people who are going to audition you know if you get an agent that's the ideal way to do it um if you don't have an agent yet it's just connections getting to know people so that you're on that list um, but maybe you're going to audition what happens is after a studio gets to know you for a little while they know what you can do they know your range they start calling in maybe for smaller roles, like, hey, let's bring in Keith for this, I, he can do that, and we can do that. And then as you get more known, larger roles. So I still audition all the time, trust me. I mean, that's the majority of the work, but I do have a lot of like, hey, we'd love to book you on XYZ uh, from a number of studios that I've already worked with. And that's really nice. Um, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of work auditioning. I mean, it's part of the job. Yeah. But it is nice that a percentage of my work is just kind of a phone call or an email, like, you've been cast in this, and I'm like, oh, what is that? Cool, awesome. When so does that happen a lot? I've heard that before. Like they just they just call you. We casted you in this part, and you don't sure. even know what the you, part I mean, is. You, I mean, you approve. I don't know how many people <laughs> say no, but I'm just saying they do say, hey, let us know if you're interested and available, and they'll give you a time frame. We're recording during the next two weeks, or we're starting in the end of November, or and so you kind of give them an, like like if you're going to for some reason be out of the country, you'd be like, yeah, if you've got to do it, then I can't. But otherwise, you're like, yeah, 
And it happens pretty frequently. I, I don't know what percentage of my work that is. I'm not sure. Because, um, you know, you do a lot of auditioning. But, I mean, I don't know, maybe 20%, 30% of the stuff is just an automatic boom. You got this, you got that. It's good to audition, though, sometimes, because you, you wonder on those shows that you did, like, well, what if I had read? Like, you cast me in this, but if I had read for this, this, maybe I would have got one of the, you know what I mean? So you never know, you're not sure what the other roles are. A lot of times it'll be like, here, there's four characters on this series, we're not sure what you'd be better for. You read, and then they'll, they'll decide whether you're good enough for any of them, but if so, which one you're best for. Okay. So I'm curious, how much, like, now, because you, you do so much, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you, there's something else coming out with your voice in it. How much time do you spend in the studio, like, on average, per week or something like that? Well, you know, it's such a... Or do you get, like, breaks and stuff? You, you, just... you do. The first thing you kind of have to get used to is is the breaks, because it's not like a nine-to-five job. I mean, I'm sure, for, I'm sure for some people it is, and I have weeks, I have long stretches of time sometimes where it's pretty consistent. I have at least a session a day or two sessions on a day, or but I, I could have, like... Three sessions on Monday, nothing on Tuesday, nothing on Wednesday, three sessions on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how to use your time well. Like if you have an afternoon off to do something fun, don't sit around going, oh, why am I not working? Uh, and sweat it. <laughs> do something fun. Yeah, take that day off because you know next week you're going to have no free time. So enjoy it when you can. So you know pretty much I mean? just like filming a normal TV series. Look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's I've been very lucky. It's been a long time where I've been fairly consistent. I don't every once in a while there'll be a week that's like really, really, really slow. But like I have a coming week right now that's it, it literally it's like three sessions, two sessions, three sessions, two, and then I go to another convention. You know, it's like it's crazy. So so what what normally lies within like a, a session? Is it just like a one scene you're doing, or is it like a session is uh, uh, generally a session time is four hour period. Okay, but it really depends on what you're working on okay so um, you know for dubbing a lot of times you may go in only for depending on how large your role is you may go in for just two hours um, but so it can be anywhere from I mean sometimes you will go in and something is like 40 minutes 30 minutes there are 20 minute sessions it really depends there could be a commercial where you just have one line and you'll beat that line to death for 30 minutes but then you're done oh you could also have one line and spend four hours doing that line not because you're maybe not getting it but because if it's a commercial, you may have a lot of approval to get along the way. In other words, the director in the room, that sounds great. I think we've got two takes we really, really like. Let's send that to Texas. Okay. And then you sit back in silence in the room for a while while they talk on the phone and back. And then they go, hey, Keith, all right, so we talked to so-and-so in Texas, <laughs> and uh, they want to try a take that's a little spicier. Can, can you throw a little spice on that, please? Uh, you know what I mean? A little wink, wink, nod kind of, kind of a vibe. Okay, sure, sure. So you do that, and you, you know, and after another half hour of that, they're like, I think we got something. We're going to go ahead and send that to our main office now, and we're got three good choices for them. And then you go through that whole thing again. Hey, <laughs> Mr. Silverstein. Hey, hey, maybe corporate says. <laughs> so Can we make it salty this time. Right, right. We need it salt. They want a salty one. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you ne you never know. So it, it could take forever, and it could be like boom. Yeah. So that's another thing because you play like it's you play a lot of different roles and you've done a lot of different voices and a lot of different voices. Um, wh what do you do when you prepare for a role? Or do, how much do you prepare for a role? It depends on the role itself. Like I know sometimes yeah. you just do like additional voices and background voices and stuff, and then sometimes you're the lead character. So I'm just curious, is like each one different or each one's different? It, it it is weird because when we think about preparing for a role, you know, we think about like. A lot of times, like on-camera actors, and you know, if, if I'm a famous on-camera actor and I've got a lead in a multi-million-dollar film, I probably have time to hire a dialect coach and to go re research the town where this is supposed, this true story is supposed to take place in, and to meet people and to stay in character for three weeks and be very method. We are not allowed that luxury very often at all, at all. I mean, there are times we get called in, you were cast, come in. And when you show up, they go, this is who you're playing, this is the show. So you're standing there and they're feeding you information for five, six minutes. And then it's like, let's start working on the character. And so you basically start on the mic. And they may have some comments and you tweak it a little bit. And then, okay, I think that's what we like. We like that. That's great. And then you move forward with that character. So there's a lot of it that's right on the spot. If you've auditioned for a role, you've at least got your audition as a starting point. Okay. So you know that they liked what you did. Although sometimes you show up after booking and they go, we love what you did. We want to tweak it this way or that way. 
Well, that happens too, but at least you still have a jumping off point because you're like, I know they liked what I did, so let's keep a semblance of that. And then you want to, okay, let's try that. And we'll... So we, we don't get a lot of time to really prepare for a role. It's, it's, it's very true. It's a lot of like, get in there, go, 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 make a voice, make a voice, go, go, go. I guess I was wondering, I was wondering cause, you know, because you, you do different voices sometimes with a lot of different characters. So I was kind of like, well, what, how do you find the voice for that character? Well, uh, I, I take a lot of visual cues when it, you're talking about animation. Um, you know, say it's original animation or, or a, you know, video game, but anything that's an original thing, so you don't have a bass voice, you don't have a Japanese voice to listen to and give you a clue, let's say, for example. Um, I look at the image, and I, they always give a description. Sometimes they're not sure what they want. Sometimes that's clear, sometimes it's not. So if you have an idea, it's always, if you think it works within their parameters, it's always nice to try that, even if you think that's not quite the, what they're asking for, but they might love this. Um, but if they're if it's a cartoony character, or they're shaped a certain way, or their mouth is a certain way, or they're a really big brawny guy, or they look kind of dumb, and it may even describe that they're not the smartest tool in the shed, or that they are very precise and meticulous about everything that they do, and everything has to be specific, and you let those things, so maybe you over enunciate for that kind of a character, you'll know whether it's a big guy, or a tough guy, the age is important, you know, do they want something that's kind of gruff, is he supposed to be badass? And then even with uh, even when you're doing something that you're translating in English from, let's say Japanese, but it could be any original language, uh, the description is a big thing because culturally there's a lot of differences. So in Japanese, if you're listening to the character that's supposed to be a sexy character, for example, um, in Japanese the voice may come. I'm not going to do a Japanese impression of, of Japanese, but but the voice may come off as more of like a, this kind of voice, which would be like a nerdy voice here. So you're hearing in Japanese something that's kind of like this high pitched and whatever is. And so you might make the call that, well, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Because in America, we would go, you know, raspy, or we'd slow it down a little bit, and we'd do that. So, so that's a, a difference. You have to understand cultural differences. Because if you're just listening, and I go, talk like that, right? You're going to go, cool, cool, cool. And you're going to sound like a nerd when you're supposed <laughs> to sound like this cool, sexy guy. So, so um, you, you also did some voices in The Walking Dead. Um, the final oh, season. the game, yes. Yeah. I was thinking of the series for a second. I'm like, no, you got the wrong guy. I didn't do it. I didn't so, do it. I want to take credit. Well, are you in all four episodes? or I'm not positive. You know, uh, I know I'm in a, a few of them. Um, I, I'm not sure right now what's happening. Like, we're in flux. What's, what's going to be? There's been some, yeah. some drama with the company. So, um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether that's continuing. I would hope so because I know people subscribed and they want to get to the end of this and everything. Well, <laughs> right, right, right. So I'm really hoping um, that's the case, but I don't actually know right now. But I, it, I know it's been a great experience, and uh, and I hope, I hope I just personally get to finish that journey. Out there, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'm always curious with voice actors. You've since, a, like I've said, I've, like a half a dozen times now. Um, you've done so many, and it's probably not going to be an easy choice. But do you have a favorite voice that you've done? What's your favorite? Do you have a favorite? I don't think he expects me to know. Um, no, I. The thing is, it's hard to separate voices from characters from the whole experience. So the experience is like the sessions, right? Going in, who did I get to work with? How fun was it to work with them? Was it an honor to work with them? Was it someone I've always wanted to work with? Um, was that a, just a good day? Did I have a good feeling? Did I walk out with a great feeling? Um, was it a, a franchise or something I've always been excited about? Is it something I loved from my childhood? Okay. Is it something that blew up like crazy? Is it something that expanded my fan base and just became like this huge thing? Is it uh, something that led to other things? Like this was a small gig, but I never would have met so-and-so if it weren't for this, and that became, so you know what I mean? So it's very hard to pick a favorite because there's so many reasons to love so many of my gigs or so many of the characters that I've done. Like, I mean, Torbjorn from Overwatch. Like, no, I could have never imagined that Overwatch would have blown up like the way that it did. And it's an original character. So, I mean, aside from other, obviously there's other languages, yeah. but I mean, for the most part, that's a character that's associated with me, and that's always kind of fun. Whereas if I am, you know, doing some anime or something, there's, I'm clearly not originating that character. It still can be really cool. Um, or if I'm doing an impression, you know, if I'm playing Luke Skywalker in a game, I'm not, no one's going to be, think of my name first for Luke Skywalker. Right. That's never going to happen. Um, so it's kind of cool to have a character that's like, oh, you know, Torben, that's, that's Keith Silverstein, you know, he originated that voice. Um, um, he suck on Hunter x Hunter is so much fun. I mean, that's a character I just I just really like being that character, not in real life, folks. But, but I mean, <laughs> to, to play that character, like that's so much fun. 
So I, you know, I enjoy going in and recording him, spending a couple hours in his cute curly shoes. Um, so and, you know, and there, so there have been a lot of reasons to love him. So I, I, people ask that, and I wish I had an answer, but it's just, it's like, it's kind of like picking kids or you know, who's your favorite pet, <laughs> right. who's your favorite. So kid I guess, I guess, I guess, a better choice mm -hmm. of question would be then, as without the character behind it, yeah. well, what's your favorite voice that you like to do? Is there one that you like? You find yourself walking around your house all days. Okay, let's do this. You know? No, that'd be too weird. <laughs> really, I do it all the time. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know if there is. Uh, you know, I, I, one of my go-to creatures, like, there's just crazy old man. This is not something that I get a lot of work doing. But I remember, I, I mean, even when I was in high school, I just was like, hey, Sonny, how are you? You know, it just was something I did. So there are kind of like go-to voices. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. if you're going to go, hey, you know, whatever they are that you just jump into real quick, whether it's like a deep something or but I, I don't know. It, some of them are more fun than like Torbs is not something that I would like just jump into because it's a difficult voice. It's hard on the throat. I mean, it's not painful or anything. Well, after four hours, it can't be. <laughs> but um, like Vector the Crocodile or something. So, so yeah, I don't know if I have a, a. I don't know if I've ever decided on what my favorite voice is yet. Like something that if I could do forever, I would just do that one. Um, yeah, I don't want to. I don't know. I don't know. I love walking around and doing Stitch's voice. Always. Doing a little Stitch. I love uh -huh. Stitch. Is like my means family. Oh. Family oh. means no bother to just be hand. For for God. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm I did. I auditioned for Stitch when we did the uh, the series. I did not book it. Um, you know, Ben Diskin, who's fantastic, booked it. Did you play? He was great. Job. Gantu and the Gantu. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was very happy with. You know, where are they? The other 625 experiments. I was very happy to, to play Gantu. It seemed like it was more in my alley. When it comes to high pitch stuff, I can do it. But <laughs> put me up against somebody that's like naturally going to be able to do that better. And it's like, no, no, no. He absolutely earned that and deserved it and did a great job with it. So Awesome, awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for speaking with me. I really do appreciate it. And like I said, this is Keith Overstein. Hi. If you don't know him, well, well you do. Just, just, just type just, it in. Just Google it if you need to know. And then you'll you see a long know. list of things you've probably watched. And we'll, oh, that was him? <laughs> so you'll find a dentist, too. There's a dentist with my same name. He'll come, up, he'll come up on the list, too. It's not me. It's not a role I play. <laughs> so there's no confusion. But otherwise, you can check him out in My Hero Academia, Bleach. Um, I mean, the list goes on. But otherwise, yeah. yeah. Check and the out. new ones are like Mega Man 11 with Dr. Oh, Wiley. Yes, Mega Man 11. Check that out. Soul Calibur 6 is out now. Yes, and that's true. Also on that one. Um, those are the two that just recently came out. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in the works. So stuff I can't talk about, but really cool. So keep an eye out. As a man, as a member of the press, I'm so sick of NDAs. But as we are, <laughs> thank you guys, and thank you, all right? You're welcome. Thanks, man. Right. <laughs> Pleasure. Awesome. Cool.